Reporting on the games you love by people who love to game. The MMO Reporter Network. Listening to Guild Wars Reporter on the MMO Reporter Network, brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at audibletrial.com slash MMO Reporter. And by Doghouse Systems. Choose your weapon at doghousesystems.com. Welcome to another episode of Guild Wars Reporter. We're on episode 145. We're f- that's a lot of episodes. That's a lot of it. We're five away from 150. <laughs> that's just crazy pants. I'm Alona, and I am joined this week by Uber Guest Hunter. I believe the tradition is to introduce me as the lovely Hunter. Well, are you lovely? I, I think so. How about iconic? Hunter. I'm kind of attached to Lovely now, to be honest. Okay, the <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely Hunter. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I like that chat room is mostly going on describing your laugh. That's probably not disconcerting at all. Well, I was disputing with them about how I laugh. I don't giggle. Men do not giggle, and they're describing other methods. Actually, I think Chortle might be. I think uh, Alpha Blue Officials. I know Emma's disputing it, but I think Chortle might be a a good way of describing it. So, do we want to jump right into it and what we talk about what we did this week? One of the main things I did was I went on a shovel party, which is... Which sounds really, like, illicit. (laughs) (laughs) Like, criminal. It sounds criminal. It sounds like I went to a shooting gallery, basically. Yeah, and then you had to hide evidence. (laughs) But a shovel party, for those who don't know, is in Silver Waste, and you use the looking for group tool, and you find someone talking about shovel party or chest farming, and then you get into that instance, and you just run around digging up the chests that are in that zone. And I went around doing that and collected about, about 80 champ eggs and got about... 18 or so obsidian shards and I'm just I think that's pretty much the best way to get obsidian shards these days not spending your karma on it well that or pvp yeah that too yeah. but I don't pvp no. really so and also it says here untold loots which, <laughs> which I was quite entertained by <laughs> yeah well I got a lot, of, a lot of stuff lots of lodestones and rares and uh, bananas rapier <gasps> so yeah. There, I'm only supposed to get those. Well, too bad. Oh, apparently. One of the other things I did this week was Romo's home instance. We went in there. Yes. He's got every single unlockable node or thing you can put in there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was impressive because those things cost a lot of money. Well, he said that they had come down quite a bit and he had bought them, like, slowly over time. And so mm-hmm. I thought, well, maybe I could start getting some of these. And I typed in node into trading post and I kind of made like a eh, noise <laughs> and closed the trading post. So it walked away. <laughs> well, the last I checked, it was hundreds of gold for these things. Yeah, I think there's, I think like the Lotus one was like 70 some gold. So it was the <laughs> lowest. It was the lowest at 70 something, like 76 or something last week. But yeah, uh, it, I think some of them go up to like 300 plus gold. So, yeah. Yeah. I backed away slowly and (laughs) (laughs) went, well, that's not happening unless I get really lucky with black line chests. I suppose I could buy a few of them, really, but uh, I probably won't because I'm cheap. Anyway, (laughs) also, I made some Ambrite weapons. I made the short bow and the bee gun. Bee gun, pew pew. Or bee gun. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, I also went 
and did temples in Or with my temple raiding guild. They do a raid every night at reset. Did I join you at all this week? I don't remember. I don't think a couple I did. weeks ago you did. Yeah, I don't think I did this week. Mm-hmm. And then of course we we did some zone completion together with your husband and Veggie from Mock, and of course there were Fungins. Yep. With the uh, Slurms and your husband and me and Celeste was there and uh, let's see who else Rune Locker joined us for the fun fractals. He joined us for fractals because yeah. M M bowed out. Right. And. Slurms had to bow out as well. So right. Celeste and M. M was in Fungins. <laughs> M, M's and Slurms were in Fungins. And Celeste and Rune joined us for Fractals. Yep. And aside from that, we did guild missions with uh, Maven. That's Bog Otter's guild. Mm-hmm. And I think so, lots of people there. Lots of well-known people. I think they said that was the largest turnout that they've had so far. Mm, it was pretty large. It was like 20, 21 people. Usually... The largest before that would have been with Relics of War, and they usually got like 15, I would say, when the guild missions were popular with them. And uh, they record those. And if you don't know, Bogart uh, has a little game he does with the Rush, and that he records the whole thing, and uh, the winner gets to choose an animal sound that the person that comes in last has to make on the recording. And every week for me, he's just trying not to come in last. (laughs) Well, yeah. I came in last the first two or three times that I did it. And the first mm-hmm. time, it was so good. And it's lost to the... For the past two weeks, I've been, you beat me. I've been amazed. Which is very impressive. This week, I was single digits. Yeah, you were like ninth last week and fourth this week. Never four! <laughs> <laughs> and I was like 12th last week and fifth this week. And I watched you just cross right in front of yeah. me. And it was like, damn it. That's pretty much what I did this week. Actually, I have a lot of overlap with you. <laughs> it's not unsurprising. <laughs> um, so, yeah. you know, Fungus and Fractals with Mock. But we got a couple of fractals that we haven't gotten in a while or possibly ever. Yeah, pretty rare. The one with uh, the Aetherblade hideout with the uh, rotating walls at the end. And the disco dancers. Woo. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the, and the crazy disco music. You're the one that got through it, though. I know. I have no idea. Top. No idea how that happened. I'm like, oh, holy. Oh, I'm, is that the wall? Is that there at the end? I made it to the end. <laughs> I was like. Yeah. I got through the first part fine, but I i don't think I've ever gotten through the top part on my I own. I cannot explain how I did that, to be perfectly honest. Mm-hmm. And as Hunter mentioned, we did the map completion. I find those so relaxing, to be honest. Yeah, actually, I was going to use the same word, relaxing. They're fun, and going into zones that maybe I haven't been to an awful lot of... And also, we've been combining those, the map completions, with whatever the daily is for event completer. Yeah. We'll try to go bring in characters that don't have that zone completed when we do it. Mm -hmm. If you get a big enough event chain, you can bang them off. You don't have to hop around the map so having map completion isn't really necessary if you try to time it like that yeah and you'll run into events naturally Mm -hmm. we pretty much just ran into events we didn't seek them out when we were so complete and again that made it more relaxing trying to make it to an event before it's done is the stressful part of doing this i finished the toy tonic collection i don't know exactly what the name is but you have to make the everlasting toy tonic so like the the winter's the day, winter's day one so the princess doll the golem wait i have a note i have a note with my list princess doll the toy griffin toy ventari toy soldier and toy golem and each one of those takes 20 elonian wines or something insane <laughs> they're like 27 silver each so like four gold each or something. Yeah. And then I had to buy the recipes. So, mm-hmm. And those are expensive too, right? They weren't too bad. I think the most I paid was like maybe six gold. Okay. So it wasn't crazy, crazy terrible. But now I can turn into a gift anytime I want because the reward for that is getting to turn into a present whenever you want. If I was going to go after one of those, it would be the Toy Griffin, because that thing is amazingly cute. 
and it is fun to turn into the griffin and then also have your toy griffin out because it's still slightly smaller than you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's like a mama it, griffin and a baby griffin. Yes! <laughs> so <laughs> so I, that's what I was doing a lot. I was turning into the griffin and then having my toy griffin out. So again, Guild Mission of the Maven, fourth place, blah, 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 moving on up. Yay me. So yesterday, well, yesterday and part of today was the beta mm. for Stronghold. And uh, so I played several games on Tuesday once I got home in the... And I played just one with a regular pickup group, but I can't remember if I won or lost that. And I did a match with Celeste. And I can't, for some reason, I can't remember if we won or lost that one. I think you said, like, you won some and lost some, so it was probably, like, a win and a loss and a win and a loss. But then I played three matches with Aurora Peachy during her Guild Wars 2 stream. She just whispered and said, do you want to join me for this and I went okay so we won two of those batches so we won lost one and that, and that was really fun I quite enjoyed it and I have a bit more to talk about with Stronghold but it's gonna I'm keeping it for the show proper yeah I watched quite a bit but I didn't play any Stronghold so and I'm not a big PvP so I don't really think I have any insight on it but it does look fun for PvP it was the game type that got like peachy trying pvp more in general like she didn't mm-hmm. care for it a lot but yeah i watched her stream today because when we were playing last night we were in maven's mumble talking but she was i don't think peachy was because she was doing the stream so it was interesting to watch it from her perspective mm-hmm. it was entertaining Earlier today, I got my T3 cultural armor for my Norn warrior. Oh, was that earlier today? Congratulations. Yeah. So that was spent a chunk of cash on that. But boy, does she look great. I love the heavy armor, the stag. Yeah, I can't think of the Norn T3 at the moment, so I'll have to check that out later. You got big stag horns. Hmm. Well, I presume for the men as well. But when I got that, I ticked over my 15k chest. Congrats on that yeah, as well. So I spent a chunk of money, but I got a chunk of money. <laughs> so I'm like, yay! Oh, 15k, you get like 30 gold yeah, or whatever. Yeah, 30 gold yeah. and whichever Hellfire or Radiant, depending on which one you haven't completed yet. Mm-hmm. And 400 gems or something? That's why I had 400 gems. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was thinking, like, I'm pretty sure I like spent in game gold enough to like get just enough gems to buy something i can't remember what i was buying now probably black line keys so i was like okay well i had zero i'm like where'd this 400 gems so there's that yeah good job and that's all i did other than something i'm going to talk about later okay so guild wars reporter live streams wednesdays at 9 30 p.m eastern standard time and 6 30 pacific and uh, at Twitch TV slash MMO Reporter, you can subscribe to the audio version of the podcast on iTunes. And remember to rate and review Guild Wars Reporter. Because if you do, I read them on the show. Yes, and that's kind of a reward in and of yeah. itself. <laughs> so we got an iTunes review on April 11th from Lemonoodle, who is in Canada. Welcome, Canada. Great podcast and never a dull moment. They are awesome and they exist and they can actually speak <laughs> English words. Is, is that praise? <laughs> well, I think that was actually after, was it last week's show or what it is? We actually talked about being able to speak English words because we weren't doing a very good job of it that week. <laughs> yes. Comma hashtag. No, but seriously, both Alona and Celeste bring a ton of charm and personality to the podcast. They are a joy to listen to, even if you are remotely interested in Guild Wars 2. And never a dull... Yes, he's usually in uh, chat, or she. Yes. Are they in chat tonight? I do not see that. Yeah, I don't see them either. Oh, well. (laughs) I'm like, oh, well, might as well not have even read it. (laughs) (laughs) They're lost, that's all I'm saying. It's nice hunt. There wasn't a colossal amount of news this week. Would you agree with that, Hunter? Yeah, basically, just a few things. So, uh, because of that, we're going to actually read the patch notes <laughs> that came out <laughs> on Tuesday. 
there was some balance bug fixing and polish and they updated the way that crafting discipline tooltips display on materials and recipe unlock items. Now, active disciplines will be displayed in white, while inactive disciplines will be grayed out. And I presume that's if you have... Bought the extra crafting license Yeah, thing? or, like, for instance, I've only done two on each of my characters, so I only ever have active crafting disciplines, but if you do them all on one character and just swap, you know, pay the money to swap between them. I guess that's, that's where that would take effect. Yeah. For each discipline, the required rating number will be displayed in green if the player's crafting skill meets that rating, or in red if the player's skill is below the required rating. So, it sounds like a good update if you have multiple craftings on one character. Yeah. Still waiting on ascended jewelry and cooking. Never... <laughs> I want you to say that after everything now. Still waiting. <laughs> Just logged into game and checked. Still not there. <laughs> they fixed a bug in which the mad scientist's harvesting tool caused a frost effect behind players. Which, aww, I wish they had kept that. I love bugs like that. And they fixed a bug with ranger pet passive states. It's like maybe it was like passive aggressive states. Like, no, it's fine. It's do whatever you want. I'm I'm okay. It's all right. It would be okay if you swapped to that other pet. I don't mind. <laughs> if I ever used the passive state, that would be important, I guess. But I don't. I usually just stow them if I don't want them to do anything. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah. You are being a problem. Stow. I really wish you could permanently stow them. How? What? Yeah, I don't want a pet with my ranger, so I would like to permanently put them away. Okay, you don't. They just stay away if you stow them. No, as soon as you attack something, they oh, come out. Oh, I did what? I did not know that. I guess you don't stow them very often, or probably just in cities? Uh, mostly in cities, but every once in a while in a fight I will. Actually, maybe I just call mm -hmm. them to me and tell them to not fight. Maybe that's what I mm -hmm. Hunter doesn't like animals. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could argue with you, but yes. <laughs> And then there were some updates to the Black Lion Trading Company gem store. There is a new rainbow unicorn finisher. It's available for a limited time. <laughs> they really come up with some interesting There's finishers. Some gems. Are you going to get it? Well, the thing is, well, I do have 400 free gems from the uh, 15k chest. <laughs> I don't know, because I really want to, I still have not bought the Quaggan Mail Carrier, and I kind of want to do that still, so. <laughs> it's permanent, and this is temporary, so we'll see how this goes. Yeah, if there were more finishers in PvE, I would definitely buy more finishers but uh i've only got the golem pummeler one and i do really really like the rainbow unicorn finisher but i don't know the llama i might i still the llama i think the llama still wins out yeah. for me so you like the goofier finishers yeah they make me feel good when i get defeated by them <laughs> i know they're supposed to be like extra like shameful but they actually make me feel happy <laughs> it was like ah i don't even <laughs> mind it's cute an adorable unicorn. <laughs> I just like the golem pummeler because at the end of pummeling you, it puts its arms away and blasts off like a rocket. It's just like, I'm all done here. See you later. Yeah, a lot of the golem-based stuff, though. Yeah. I did get the backpack with the, with the voiceover. IB Storage is saying they need a Quaggan Air Force finisher. That would be awesome. They do have the cute Quaggan finisher, but that would also be good. With the pole or whatever. Yeah, music with the rainbow from you know, too. Moving on, though. <laughs> the, <laughs> possibly, I well, I think this is one of the more important notices. The Living World Season 2 Complete Pack is available in the Upgrades category of the Gem Store. Purchasing this package will unlock any Living World Season 2 episodes you do not currently have unlocked. Each episode is unlocked at a 20% discount compared to purchasing individually. The price for this item is automatically adjusted based on the number of episodes being unlocked. And so check the item description for details. Wow, that is a perfect way of doing that. If you need all of them, I discount agree. the whole thing 20%, or like 20% off each one. Just you need two or three. You don't have to peck and hunt through and try to figure it out. It just knows. I did see some people complaining, though, about the new season two. Why? How can you complain about this? <laughs> this is ideal. The challenge modes are still broken. Well, okay. So if you buy the thing, you can't really finish the achievements. And people were saying, oh, let's, let's boycott. And I'm like, 
if you boycott, the sales will be lower and they'll have less reason to introduce season one as a living story. Those are two completely separate issues. Yeah, but monetarily, they will not be as... I'm just saying, the being upset at the challenge moats being bustomicated and I agree. purchasing, like, they're too... I mean, they're going to fix it. It's arena net. They'll fix it. I mean, people should not be so up in arms about it. And then finally, each race and gender now has an additional three new hairstyles found exclusively inside self-style hair kits and total makeover kits available in the services category of the gem store. And I really like a lot of these. Finally, the big the news. Big... I new didn't say this is the big news. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is the big news because people were like talking about it all over the place. I thought the Living World complete pack would be more the big news, but okay. Other than the broccoli hair, which I think is awesome, to be honest. The atomic explosion. What was? What did Cal call it? Or somebody? Somebody on Twitter, Reddit, maybe. I don't know. It was um, Hiroshima. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there's the the Char One female one that wraps around and ties below her neck, her below her chin. That one, mm -hmm. it just looks like a choking hazard. <laughs> like, yeah, you know how I'm going to defeat you? Yoink! <laughs> I really liked the uh, the Natalie Dormer one. Yes, that was good. and I like that you thought the exact same thing I did when I saw it. I was like, hey, it's like Natalie Dormer hair. Yeah. So now I want to see if I can make Natalie Dormer in-game. Hmm. I wonder if anyone's already done just it. Just a thought. Hmm. Romo thinks the big news is the hair. The hair. Yeah. I really like the Savari sets, too. Both male and female. There's a lot of really good hairstyles that came in with this one. I went through and, you know, tried them all on all my characters, and I didn't change any of them. But there were a couple I was intrigued by. I'm really happy with the short hair option for the Norn ladies. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Yay there. That's, so that's, that's all that news. <laughs> Report from Lion's Arch. There was an interview on Massively OP with Scott McGough, and it was about the Hylek, and uh, it was titled something like Maguma Hylek Interview, and I thought it was like, at first, when I read it, I thought it was going to be, like, an interview, a role-play interview with, on, I don't know, some weird thing. But uh, it was Scott McGough, and uh, they talked a lot about their mentality and where their culture, and I particularly enjoyed the part where he, he spoke of, quote, they're not just riding in on their beetles and rounding people up, Planet of the Apes style, and they're not just throwing nets over people and dragging them into cages. Mounts confirmed. For anyway. NPCs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, I sorry, did we do the quick warning? That if you go and read the actual article, which we all have a link to in the show notes, there are some slight spoilers to the personal story of the core game. So just to throw that out there. They're not earth-shattering, but, but they are in there. Mm -hmm. I would say they're very light spoilers, and I wouldn't have even mentioned it personally, but yeah. I would consider them light to medium spoilers. You and Celeste yes. agree on yes. that. I do not. <laughs> Let's just leave it. <laughs> so Tina Lauro, who wrote the article for Massively OP, commented on Reddit about... Uh, ATLDR that uh, she liked, and uh, it's here in the show notes, and I guess I'll just read it out. Types of Hylic are Nuwatch, I don't know how to pronounce that, do you? I would have pronounced it Nuhawk. Nuhawk, which are the equivalent of bullfrogs, and the Itzel, which are the equivalent of tree frogs, and the Zintel, which we've seen in the core game, are uh, fanatical sun worshippers. Frog frogs. Mm hmm. Regular frogs. She asked, will there be new Mordrum in Hot? And uh, yes, was the answer. And she asked, is there going to be more lore about the Mordrum? And yes, was the answer. Not very in-depth answers well, here. this is the too long didn't read. Well, I So suppose. it's like bang, 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 bang. Well, I did read, and they, the questions were very vague and essentially yes, was but the answer. But it was a long article. 
or interview. Like this, <laughs> it took me like a couple hours to actually finally get through the whole thing because I had to like break and do something else, and then oh, I have to finish reading this. Holy crap, I'm not done yet. It was. Yeah, I had the same experience. It was quite long. <laughs> What are the similarities between Itzel and tree frogs? And they both use poison as a weapon and live in the trees. <laughs> and also, apparently, uh, tree frogs give side eye because I love the Itzel because they always look <laughs> in all the screen caps and pictures <laughs> that they've posted of them. They always look like they're going right. Yeah, they're very much modeled after tree frogs. And I would just go to this article just to see the screenshots yes. because there's the high look look amazing. I love, I love both of them. The bullfroggy ones are good too, but I just love the, the like slight squint, I don't believe what you're saying look of the Itzel. And uh, they asked how will the Itzel's nature goddess Amayali affect HOT? And uh, Amayali is mostly worshipped by the Itzel. They don't like Mordermoth, who is testing their faith. The Newhawk are pessimistic, but still allies of the Itzel. Yeah, they're just a lot more like pessimistic or pragmatic. They're not as friendly. Mm -hmm. They're not unfriendly, but they're not as friendly as the Itzel. Okay. But they're so different is... Uh, the next question. Well... Yeah. <laughs> a statement. Quest statement. But Scott responds, They complement each other. The Zintel want to convert the other tribes. The Hylic from Core Guild Wars 2 are blunt, like the Newhawk. Yeah. And, the, and actually, the Newhawk and regular type high look, look more alike too but um mm -hmm. and will we get to play with their alchemical creations yes and what do the new hawk make they make a wide range of potions they're still getting settled in the maguma how does the new hawk brute force attacks work in the jungle they can belly flop really hard belly flop. <laughs> It would be nice to have NPCs that can actually do stuff. Hopefully they can, like, help out with those belly flops, or unless we have to fight them a lot. I was really excited about the whole belly flop thing. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. Apparently. Uh, how do the Zintel worshippers come into the story? They're conducting an aggressive, martial, spiritual, political, and physical campaign to convert the jungle tribe to sun worship. So that sort of explains... In Silverwaste, in the north, the far Silverwaste, where the Hylic are in that uh, desert canyon, and they have prisoners and uh, stuff. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. So that that's our first like look at that interaction. They're rounding people up to convert them to their religion. <sighs> no, they're not going to make friends that way. <laughs> How do Hylic and Mordrum interact? Zero tolerance, hostility. Hylic are good allies for us to have. And what influenced the design of the new Hylic? Itzel have a chilled out surfer mentality. Newhawk are pessimistic pragmatists. Surfer mentality is an interesting sort of uh, mentality to give a player a race. He does go on to explain more that it, from the perspective of while uh, the surfer is surfing, they have to be you know kind of calm and relaxed, but also move with the waves and make changes on the fly, depending on how things are going. I just hope there's like some surfer terminology worked into the dialogue. Sup, bro? It made me think of like the uh, turtles in. <laughs> in uh, That's yeah. Uh, mm. In Nemo. Oh, in Nemo, right. I was thinking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Which I guess the one kind of informed the other. I never watched any Turtles at all. What? I had moved beyond the age range when that was a thing. I see. Okay. And finally, the favorite thing about the new Hylic from Scott McGough, he likes their animations, which is understandable. They're very good looking. Yes. <laughs> I like the way he said it was like, I want to be alone with the Hylic. <laughs> <laughs> They're very good looking. <laughs> no, yeah, they. I really like the styling of them. I love their eyes. <laughs> They're shiny. They're they very, very shiny. shiny. Even well, the toady ones aren't, but Newhawk. I should actually call them Newhawk as opposed to toady ones. To follow up on my what I did this week with Stronghold, Guild Wars reporter was invited by ArenaNet to play Stronghold with a couple of their devs and other members of the community. So 
as such, I was able to play three matches earlier today on a an arena net custom arena. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. It was very important that I do this for press because I am such you know I know so much about PvP. <laughs> Alone as a member of the elite yeah. now. From my time slot, we had um, John Corpening, whose team I was on, and Hugh Norfolk, who killed me several times. So, and I wasn't sure, do you think it's important to say who the other people were on each team? I wrote them in here, but I didn't know if it was important. I don't recognize any of the names. I did not either, other than Nightmare, who is Hugh, Hugh's mm-hmm. character, and John played a necro called Jaggy Shroom Shroom, which I thought was a hilarious <laughs> name. So we were able to ask a few questions. Obviously, while you're playing, it's mostly just like silence and fighting and asking for assistance here or there. So, uh, But the Grimlock Soulsteel, who was on my team, did ask John a question of, is this going to be the only map that has stronghold mechanics, or is this just the only one that we get to know about and john said we're starting with this map right now then really we want to get feedback and all that but we're only going to launch with this map to begin with but it is our intent to make grimlock went on to say so it's just to get the game type really polished and john said yeah definitely this is really something new for us and we just want to get the feedback and make this the best it can be and then i asked are you finding that the speed of the matches is going by faster as people have played it more? And John said, that's an interesting question. And I think one thing we're going to do at the end of the beta, we're going to take a look at the data that we get. And he says, which always cracks me up, the data, the beta. And then he got in trouble from his coworker for saying that. (laughs) Uh, We'll take a look at that and see some of our tests that we've done with the company, the results we got were pretty good and look like in general matches were ending the way we would like to see them go. But we'll take a look. And that's one of those things that we're going to be adjusting based on feedback that we get because it's such a different game type. And there's so many different roles you can play. When I talked to John being at PAX East, I think I talked about this on the show a little bit when I got back, he did say that the matches in general are taking longer for stronghold. And they're kind of mm. hoping that they'll speed up as people get used to the mechanics of them. Yeah, I thought the match was supposed to be kind of shorter, and I noticed they were taking like 20, 30 minutes sometimes. On the ones I did with PG, I think two of them timed out. And those were mm. the ones we won, actually. Do you think that having a selection of different maps is important for Conquest or Stronghold? If we're going to have one Stronghold, why not have several? Several maps, yeah. I think it would be interesting if they did have several and then you could do, because a lot of what I'm hearing and what I was wondering as well with Stronghold is it's such a different style of gameplay than Conquest that if I was voting and had my build, PvP build set for Conquest and got Stronghold, I'd have to do some really quick fancy footwork. Mm -hmm. to change up and i did try to find one that was kind of a blend of what i was thinking i'd like to run and what i typically run for people just to see if okay if if i can get something that all i have to do is change two things then i'm good and it does basically what i want right but at the same time i'm wondering if they got enough maps for stronghold and enough maps for conquest and they just split it between the two and you could choose one or the other and then choose maps within that type that seems to be what a lot of people want. But if they only have the one, we don't know. And templates, yeah, cross <laughs> templates. Build templates would also solve that. True. And I think I was talking on Twitter with uh, Dragon Season and one other person. I can't think who now about that. Templates are right. Templates are right. Yeah, it would be, I guess I should say this. All I did was, as much as possible, all I did was supply back and forth. And so I had... Mm-hmm. Glamour's recharging faster, so I used Portal as much as I could to pop between the doors and the supply. Yeah. As long as it wasn't being camped, (laughs) I did pretty good with that. (laughs) I'm not sure if something was said as well. I don't know if it was the beta as a whole or just these particular series of matches that were today on the custom arena, but they weren't supposed to count towards your PvP track, but it did thanks to a bug. Yay, bug! Oh, really? <laughs> and they're not really worried about it. In fact, I think John 
said, best bug ever. <laughs> and I said, except for sit jump. And he said, well, yeah, nothing beats sit jump, which I feel like I need to explain now. During one of the early betas, if you did slash sit, you could still hit the space bar for jumping and your your character, whilst in a sitting position, would bounce up and down. <laughs> Lots of screenshots. Oh, it was so good. I loved it. Mm -hmm. and Azura. Dior wine Grimbold or Bob <laughs> <love the> <laughs> uh, <laughs> wrote into us and he said, I've been listening to your show for over a year now. It's my favorite thing about Guild Wars 2. Keep up the great work. Yeah, it's a pretty good show, Bob. I agree. <laughs> Uh, you guys are so much fun. I can imagine it is a ton of hard work, so thanks. And I said, thanks, Bob. And I said, it is a ton of hard work, so thank you, Bob. It's <laughs> <laughs> backbreaking. <laughs> I'm exhausted here. Uh, <laughs> got a snort laugh, so that's good. <laughs> Bob, I, I think you had a question as well, and I don't remember what it was, so just send it to me in-game. And I will answer what it was, because I can't think of what it was right now. And that we had an email sent through. It says, greetings, Celeste and Alona. And for the interest of this email, you are going to be Celeste, Hunter. Oh, okay. You should have told me that. Just in general, because you're here. Oh. <laughs> Came across your podcast recently and super enjoy listening to it at work while I'm chopping wood and building lots of cool medieval structures. I'm a seven-year veteran of Guild Wars 1, and I've played Guild Wars 2 since beta, and love it all so very much. And then some happy faces. I live in England, UK, and really miss being able to play with my American buddies from Guild Wars 1 due to different servers, etc. Not sure if you already discussed this on the show, but how cool would it be if we could all mix the servers back like in Guild Wars 1 days? Also, how about interracial armor? I would love to be able to use full tier 3 set of Norn armor on my human ranger, just like Guild Wars 1 had. What do you think of that? And, as a final thought, have you and your guildies ever thought of recording some dungeon runs or boss battles on TeamSpeak and using the entertaining parts from that as part of your podcast? Just a suggestion, and could be cool, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Love the show, keep up the good work, and advertise the donating thing more next time so people can send you money. <laughs> I'll just like, uh, my bank account is, ding, 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 put it in, uh, big love <laughs> and good hunting, Ty from the guild TEA, or T. Thanks, yeah. Ty, for the email. And so, uh, one, firstly, your job sounds cool. It sounds really cool. What is he working on? I don't know. Chopping like... wood and building lots of <laughs> medieval structures. <laughs> Does he work at a renaissance fair? Is I don't know, but on? it sounds amazing. Two, I will always discuss how great it was in Guild Wars 1 with their servers and districts and how they were set up. I do understand why they aren't able to do that with Guild Wars 2, with it being such an open world comparatively to Guild Wars 1. But districts, man, they were so great. Yeah, I didn't. I don't know a lot of people in Europe, but uh, occasionally I would play with people from Europe. It was pretty good. I never did, but I still love the idea of districts. You know, for people who've never played Guild Wars One, instead of mega servers or worlds that you chose, you just would be on North American server or European server. But all it was was like a drop down in your yeah top left corner. And you could just choose one or the other. And then within there, if you were in, say, Lion's Arch, and if there was an event going on and you were in a different instance of the map than a friend, you would just look up and say, I'm in District 30. And they would just take their little drop down, scroll down to District 30, click that, and boom, you're in the same instance. Yeah, it was quick and easy. It was wonderful. And it... of course, there, there were still problems well, like... During events, if your friend were were in a district that was full, you you still couldn't enter that district, even though it was listed yeah. on the drop down. That's true. It, I mean, it, nothing's perfect. Although they did end up 
gaming the system a little bit with even districts would do one event and odd districts would do the other. Like if we're rewards mm -hmm. for an event that were constricted to one side or another. Duena versus Grenth for Winter's Day. Yeah. Odd numbers were Duena, even numbers were Grant, or something like that. And you just choose which one you needed. Done! The third part, I actually am really happy that Cultural Armor is locked down the way it is. Yeah. Although I, I have on occasion thought, you know, it would be kind of nice, but... No, I'm right with you, I think. It's just like a, a nice reward for that race, and it's very... The, the actual sets are geared towards... They're not just called Cultural, they are geared towards yeah, that culture like as well. you would have, like, a human wearing the Zoja armor. Yeah. Although you said, like, Guild Wars 1 had... They didn't have different races, though. It would be similar in Guild Wars 1 of a Necro wearing an Ellie's armor, which just didn't happen. So this is mm. kind of more like that, I think. No, profession-specific armors, or at least armors that look like they're geared toward a certain profession would be pretty cool. Well, they have they've been doing that with outfits a little bit, but not... not yeah, outfit. like the Shadow Assassin outfit. And kind of in the same vein of that, I wish the starter elements, you know, like Mesmer masks or the helms for the war, like, and shoulder parts for warrior, I wish they were locked to the corresponding profession in your wardrobe. Hmm. And I don't think they will at this point because it, people would get very upset. <laughs> but right, um, they would. Riot. They would. But if if when they brought the wardrobe in, if they were locked like the cultural ones were to the the profession that was going into the wardrobe, and I, they probably couldn't. There was probably some sort of back end programming that made mm -hmm. it prohibitively irritating to try make <laughs> that way. But it does sort of bug me when I see an Ellie with, like, those necro ghostly eyes. Right, yeah. But, uh, meh, what are you going to do <laughs> about that? You can get the red eyes and the green eyes anyway, and they're fairly similar, aren't they? They are, but I I just threw that one out. Like, there's also the one with, like, the demon eyes with the black and red face paint. You know, a mesmer using that would look silly. I, I mean, I, <laughs> people do it all the time. But I can't bring myself to do it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And finally, we have streamed gameplay on occasion, and it, it would be cool to do it some more. On my end, I need to make some tech upgrades to make it more viable. If you want to go back and watch me try to do the Winter's Day jumping puzzle, you will see how bad my stream of capabilities are. They're not good. It was like watching a slideshow. <laughs> it was. Oh, I felt so bad about that. It was a lot of fun, though. It was fun, and I have... On occasion, probably a couple times a month since Winter's Day was done, think, I wish I could do the Winter's Day jumping puzzle. I wish it yeah. was still around. It, I like it, and I don't like it. That present staircase is such a pain. Yeah, it is. I know Celeste could stream it, but and we, we could. I would totally be fine. We would just have to make sure that everyone in the party was okay with it. Mm -hmm. And we'd have to not say bad words. <laughs> what? <laughs> but I've already swore like two or three times. I know, you got a G's hunter out of <laughs> Celeste in chat room about that. <laughs> Tales of Tyria. Over on YouTube, Dini Kong posted this brand new finisher for, what, 7,000 gems? <laughs> to which I say, shut up and take my money. <laughs> and it's amazing. It's a pretty good finisher. I, I oh buy. my god. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. I loves it. It's like definitely a, like shaking a fistful of cash. <laughs> <laughs> I also had a video that we should share. It is a video, it's a music video, a parody from Ixa Which that was just posted today. Yeah. It's pretty funny. Some bukas that I used to know is the name of the video. It says, uh, Super Parody Time, Ixa expresses her concerns to the Arcane Council for their decision to halt funding to her favorite jumping educational device. 
Yeah, Ixa has a bunch of videos like this, if I recall correctly. I thought that was super cute. One, I love the song. The actual song. I know it was on the radio a bunch, but I still really love it. And it's a great one to parody. There's a, also, oh, there was the Star Wars one. Uh, oh. Was right. It was so no. funny. Oh. I thought it was Grand Theft Auto, maybe? Uh, I never saw that one. No, there was okay. there was one about, they were singing to George Lucas, and it was hilarious. <laughs> I can't remember, but yeah. So, if you have uh, any events or anything you want to send us, please send us an email at gwreporter at mmoreporter.com. If you've got a burning question for our Ask an Azura segment, let us know. We have coupon codes for Doghouse Systems. Use the coupon code MMOReporter at doghousesystems.com to get an additional 120 gigabyte Super Star Destroyer drive for free on their next build. <laughs> and just so you guys know, he totally wanted to say that. I didn't make it. <laughs> I was like, you already got... Did you put Super Star Destroyer there? He goes, yes, I did. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and also over at Audible Books... Now with sound, go to audibletrial.com slash mmoreporter to get a free audiobook of your choice. And no Rambogos. We have a Rambuco. Rambuco. And we have a Patreon page. If you're in love with the show or the network, please consider becoming a patron on our Patreon page. In the very least, it helps us keep the metaphorical lights on. So check it out at patreon.com slash MMO reporter. Shouldn't we thank Martin? I feel like we should be thanking Martin. I think Martin gets thanked at the beginning of each month. I see. Okay. Thanks, Martin. But we can still Even thank though it's Martin. not the beginning of the month. I, yeah, let's thank. I thank everyone who's become a patron on our Patreon. It just, I'm just always. People are awesome. That's really what it comes down to. It's pretty generous. So if you want to contact Guild Wars Reporter, you can email us at gwreporter at mmoreporter.com. You can tweet at us at gwreporter. Our website is guildwarsreporter.com. You can leave us a voicemail at 616-666-6778 or use the widget on the right-hand side of the website. Our YouTube is MMO Reporter Network. Remember to like our videos and subscribe to the Guild Wars Reporter playlist. Uh, our Facebook is GW Reporter. Our Tumblr is gwreporter.tumblr.com. Visit us on Twitter at one big pair pear as in the fruit. That's me. Or at Hunter's Insight, one word, or at Sela Oki for Celeste. But she's not here today. She's still on Twitter. Yeah, she's still on Twitter. Go ahead and tweet out. She exists outside of the confines of this show. Bomb her Twitter. Let's go. <laughs> Aww. And you can reach me in game. I'm one big pear as in the fruit dot one two four nine. And you can get me in game at Hunt H U N T. I forget my user display name or whatever. <laughs> it's Hunter dot five three four two or something. <laughs> or something. Okay, so Ram books for Rambucas. Now with sound for the bookas who can't read. Too good. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, chat room, for hanging out with us tonight and being, I wrote, I wrote being generally. <laughs> <laughs> it's just for my text ended. Well, being they are great. generally. You guys are generally. Yes. I actually didn't, when it's on my laptop, I wasn't being as distracted by chat room tonight for some reason. Hmm. Thank you to Hunter for keeping me company again. It's well, been great having you on to talk about Guild Wars 2 and all the time you spent in Stronghold. <laughs> I was wondering when that would come up. <laughs> Saved it for the end. <laughs> <laughs> it's always great coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And thank you for downloading the show or watching slash listening to us on YouTube. I know I mostly listen to shows on YouTube. Hopefully you enjoyed it and got some laughs. But most importantly, we hope to see you in game.
tell me, chat room, if what you see on the screen is what <laughs> needs to be there. Yeah, let Alona know that we can, she can, be, you can hear her. <laughs> that one, you can hear me. And two, what is showing up on screen is not my desktop with Windows. <laughs> <laughs> I can see, yeah. You can see my desktop? Yeah, I can see your, uh, no, the, sp- just the screenshots. Just screenshots and just the, the, the ticker? Yeah, the ticker. That's it? Okay, good. Because, I bet you that sounded hilarious, just you. <laughs> <laughs> just like talking like a crazy person. <laughs> oh. Alright, I think we're good to get going. Yeah. Do you want me to say anything? Intro wise? I I do I do the intro. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I, that's the way you want it. No, I, I was, see how it is. I was, I was listening to what or listening, reading what M wrote. In chat. Uh, first of all, I don't giggle. Let's just get that straight. That's, that's a man's laugh. Men don't giggle. That's the end of that. Okay. <laughs> you have a wonderful laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Celeste will have to edit that out I later. I think she may. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so that's, that's all that news. And so we begin report from Lion's Arch. Right? Well, we've already no. done reports from <laughs> This was this whole thing's been a report from Lion's Arch. <laughs> you mean poop. Poop in a group, yes. <laughs> Yay, victory. On massively OP with Jeff McGoff. Uh, Scott McGoff. Scott McGoff. Scott McGough. <laughs> the other tribes, the Hylic form, Cord, you would go get it. <laughs> <laughs> See, yes. all your tongue yes. twisting from last week yes. is rubbing off yeah. on Yeah, See, it's not so easy, is it? <laughs> Thanks for watching the video, everybody. Don't forget to check out all the other podcasts at mmoreporter.com or by clicking on any of the links here. And please check out our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash mmoreporter. Thanks, everyone, and see you in game.